Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Burial and V-Ray 6 beta, public beta, just got announced. So I figured why not look into some of the new features. So the first one I actually want to look into is, or showcase, is the V-Ray or Chaos Scatter, I should say. Um, and to do this, I will create a grassy field and so we need a plane that our grass can be on. Let's call this uh, field. And we can maybe add a, let's see, a displace. Let's do a maps general find a noise map. And we can put this on as a map here. Add some strength to it, maybe just something like that. Make it rectal, turn up the levels a little bit, and then add a turbo smooth for the displace so that we get some details too, just to get some une unevenness. Um, so we have our ground ready. Um, let's create a physical camera so we have a view to look from. Now we need to add some grass to this. So one of the ways we could do this, or the way to do this, is that we go into the Create Geometry menu and then find the Chaos, and here we have Chaos Scatter. Um, and the Chaos Scatter works by having a distribute on target objects, which is the targets or the objects you want to have geometry on. So in this case, our ground plane. And then we need to find some instance models, uh, objects that we can distribute around the plane. So for that, I will use Cosmos and I will search grass and maybe take a few. Take this one, grass field. And we could take something like, uh, let's take this one. So we'll just start with these two. And in the Chaos Scatter menu, we can then add these two objects as what we want to distribute. And we can already see that it's distributing a lot of um, models uh, on the get-go. So let's just create some light so we can see what we're doing. Let's just create a sun, something like this. And we can, oh, by the way, when you right click, you can no longer find um, the convert and V-Ray, VFB, and so on. It's all been put into this menu up here, where you can go into the V-Ray, VFB, or you can use the icons from the toolbar if you want to. So by doing this, we can already see that it's working. It's doing its thing. Um, when I go into perspective, obviously, it's way too bright because of the sun. So in order to fix that, I will add a, let's go into the environment to fix. The hotkey is uh, eight can add an exposure control and get from camera. Go for a camera node and select my camera one. And this, when I restart it, should make my perspective view works the same as the camera. So if I change any of my exposure settings on the camera, my perspective view would change as well. This is new, but it's just a nice thing. All right, so obviously we have way too little grass instances on our plane. So let's look into the settings on our chaos scatter. So the first thing we see is that we have the, uh, besides the distribute on target and instance models, we can also change the frequency. So if you have different models here and some of them you don't want to repeat as often, you can lower the frequency of that specific model. So the one, uh, 0.000 here is the frequency added to those. So you can see in this case, grass field 008 is less frequent than the other one. Um, this is nice if you have, um, if you wanna add rocks or different kinds of trees, but you don't want uh, all of the trees all the time and then even distribution or whatever. So now we can change our scattering. In general, we can enable and disable our scattering in general. We can change the max limit of uh, polygons for our surfaces. We can change the surfaces to be 1D, so it's on splines. It can be on surfaces like we have now, or it can be within a bounding box. So like a gizmo or a sphere that we want to fill up with something using scatter. We can also 
avoid collisions. This is great for trees or other things where we're getting close enough to see that the mesh would be colliding and then use spacing and percentages to uh, keep them apart from each other. We can edit the instances we have directly in here. So if I say edit instances, I can actually be allowed to move specific instances so I can actually change stuff around if I want. I can convert my instances to max geometry or I can open up the scatter list which shows all the chaos scatters we have in the scene. Right now we only have one. But here we can on the fly change the display options for it uh, if it's enabled or not, the, um, the max limit, the count and everything. So this is a great little tool for that. If we have a huge forest or grass field or whatever, we can enable camera clipping so that the grass doesn't uh, isn't visible after um, a certain distance. So we can extend or we can use near and far uh, overrides and we can use, um, so if I change the far, we can see that when I get low enough, I'm clipping where the geometry is visible or not. Or I can, um, take off extended view and so on. So we're not gonna use it for this because we just have this relatively small field of 10 by 10 meters. Um, we have transformations. Transformations is the X, Y, Z to and from, uh, or from and to in terms of shifting everything. So if I take two up here, we can see that everything shifts along the X axis. So we can shift stuff um, on the distributed object. Um, and control it via maps or stepping distances and so on. The same goes with rotation. Right now, right now there's a random rota rotation on the C um, from zero to 360. That means that every time it instances an object, it can randomly um, rotate it along the Z axis by 360 degrees. So if we look at this, so every time this gets instanced, it can rotate along itself like that. And that's basically it. So. After that, we can change something about areas. And areas is actually a pretty cool little thing. Um, also, we actually want to go into surface scattering, I um, forgot to mention, where we have our random distribution and a total count of 1,000. So right now, we have 1,000 instances of our geometries. Um, but instead, we can set it up per square, but don't click it yet if you're still rendering, because it'll set automatically, in this case, a count of 1,000 per 10 by 10 centimeters, which is a lot of objects. So let's set the count down to one, set it per square, and then say, for example, for each, sorry, each meter, we will have a count of maybe uh, 200 instances. So this is still a lot. Um, you might want more, you could set it to whatever it's needed, obviously, depending if it's trees, if it's grass or whatever. You could also distribute via your UV map. So it can go into a grid, it can go running grid and hexagonal grid. And then you can uh, change the spacing to have more or less instances on your UV in, in general. So this will uh, definitely help with uh, some situations. Right now, we're just going to go with random distribution. Um, we can set slope limitations if we want to. Again, if we have trees and we have a ground plane which has uh, steep hills or whatever, uh, that'll help with, um, with that. So in areas, we have the spline includes and spline excludes, which is kind of neat. So if we wanted to create a path in our field so that we had a uh, running path or something like that, we can go into splines and create a line. Let's just move this out of the way a little bit. We could add a random spline to our geometry like this. Maybe let's just go all the way like that. And we can by change uh, going to the chaos scatter, we can add spline exclude, which is the spline we just made. And now it'll exclude from one to one in near and far plane of from the uh, line itself. And this is 360 degrees, by the way. So if I change our near to let's say 20, and our far to maybe 100. So it fades this allows some of them to grow within that line, but they'll avoid basically your spline. 
this can be used for yeah, uh, making pathways or whatever would be needed. We can also add something like areas. So if I created a circle over here and wanted to have a scattering of whatever these objects was, uh, let's make two actually, so we can add a circle over here as well. We can then go into our scattering and tell it to, let's just remove this exclude and we can add the circle over here and over here. So it'll only be included in those areas for the spines um, while still referencing the um, plane that we're actually projecting them on or that we're scattering them on. So this is really neat um, to, um, to make that work. So for ours, we will just add the, maybe the pathway. Um, obviously, when we have a pathway like this, we probably want to do something about our actual um, uh, material for for the um, for the ground plane here. So let's just open up uh, Cosmos and we can go ground, and we could add something like I don't know. Let's just add this. And now we have a neat little pathway on our grassy field. And obviously we can add multiple things to scatter. We can even have more scatter objects as in more, um, we can create an, a different scatter for the trees and a different scatter for stones and rocks or whatever we want to, and then really just go along this. So um, last thing, we have a viewport display. The viewport display will um, determine which previous type we're using. Right now we're using um, box, like a wire box, but we could actually say full. So it'll display the full geometry of what we're instancing, but it has a max instances of a thousand. So if we change this, our viewport max um, instances will increase or decrease and with previous full, um, this might you know, break your computer, so be careful about um, setting those settings uh, too high if you're viewing all of your objects at the same time. But also it can help you by changing previous types of full, uh, actually seeing where your larger instances are, again, like a forest or trees or something like that. You can change the max polygons, um, which we would change in the max limit we have up here. And lastly, we have an info box, which actually tells us exactly how many instances we ha have and how many polygons that consist of. And we can see it's, go it's going fairly quickly. This is all done with, um, uh, sorry, with proxy files. So it's distributing V-Ray proxies all the way ar uh, around. And you know, it's, it's really nice as a nice little tool to do whatever, um, like I said, it doesn't have to be a grass field, it could be a forest, could be anything. There are also uh, in the new, uh, or in chaos, in the Cosmos browser, sorry, we actually have now presets as well. So you can play around with some of these presets if you want. You can see I've already downloaded most of them. Um, so you can add like a forest or whatever to your mesh. So if I have my um, field uh, selected right now, I can literally just add the forest to it and it'll import all the models and set up our chaos scatter so that it has something that makes sense and right now it's not exactly the largest um, piece of land we have here so we only have room for uh, I think two trees <laughs> um, but if I change the size of the plane and then we'll have like a um, basically a forest and yeah that's kind of neat. So it's pretty easy to just use uh, the presets, but try and you know mess around with it and you know see what you can get out of it. There's a lot of great things that you can use this scatter tool with. So I'll look forward to see what you guys are gonna make of it. So yeah, that's it for now. So see you later. Bye.